Joining us today, we have a project manager with over 14 years of experience in the management of multi-million pound project budgets across the various boroughs of London, having provided her extensive knowledge and experience in the inner workings of economic generation. She's also known as a cycle-breaking coach, having founded the U-Force organization, which aims to break cycles of generational poverty through empowerment. I want to go back as to what was the point mm -hmm. or that inspiration that made the group of you yes. teachers, yeah? Yes. That decided to start to do these lessons on a Saturday before the book came Before out. the book came. So the, yeah. the, 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 the Saturday school is um, been there for many years. It's yeah. a supplementary Saturday school. It was originally started by Bernie Grant in Croydon. Okay. Yeah. So this is in Tottenham, I presume? No, it's no. in Croydon. Croydon, okay. It's in Croydon. Yeah. And the black history is a top topic that is um, that the students get for key stage three, mm -hmm. so it's from 11 upwards. So you do math there, you do English yes, there, you do yes, science there, yes. and you get black history also complementary. How I started teaching it is that I've done black studies for five years, yes. I've studied, and through that you start teaching children before mm -hmm. you start doing lectures to yeah. adults. And, and I'm still digging back a bit further mm -hmm. um, because where you're saying that you guys started this um, teaching program, mm -hmm. the mainstream uh -huh. wasn't doing that. Well, the mainstream, if you talk to, we've we done an interview recently and yeah. the children were asked, are you taught this thing in school? And they said, no. Yes. Um, a lot of information they wasn't aware of. And the stuff that you do teach in school is fairly repetitive. Yes. Um, it's There's rather slave. Yeah, it's rather slavery or maybe American civil Martin rights. Martin Luther King. Yes, Malcolm Rosa X, Parks yeah. and so forth. And even in the book, um, if we speak about Rosa Parks, which is um, and the bus boycott in America, which is very very important, mm. but that also inspired Paul Stevenson here in Bristol in 1963, that led a bus boycott in Bristol, and I've never heard of that bus boycott. So, so Rosa Park was what period again? Um, I haven't got the dates there, yeah. really. It's in the book? Yeah. Book, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so Rosa Park no, was... No, Rosa Park's not in here. So yeah, okay, so Rosa Park was a, was a particular period, and then the person in the UK was inspired by Rosa Park, so that was after... Yeah, Rosa so the person in the book was inspired by what was going on in America with the civil rights movement yes. with Martin Luther King. Yes. And um, the segregation was going on there. And in mm. Bristol, there was a bus, there was a bus company that yeah. did not employ black people. Mm. There was a gentleman who actually phoned up and got an interview. When he got to the interview, he was, you know, he could hear the whispers, you know, Mr. Bailey's a black man. Right. And they said, tell him that the, the, um, the position has been filled. Yes, yes. And so that led to not only black people, it led to black and white people doing a boycott against the bus company mm. in Bristol. So they were, those days there was a colour bar system. Right. Um, again, same in Oxford Street and Regent Street where black people weren't allowed to work front of house. And there was campaigns that was led to um, bring around the first Race Relation Act of mm. 1965. But information like this is not on the forefront. No, it's not on the forefront. You have to dig to find these sort of information. Actually, well, you now have the information right, right. in this book. So that's one of the real <laughs> essence of the book. And, and the key thing, what, what you said about the book, is that it actually is capturing black British history. Yes. Where one can actually relate yes. to. Then have to go across the pond, pond if anything. No, you can relate to it right here. Mm. What I actually love about this book as well is that it gives you the opportunity to have conversations with your parents or yes. your grandparents, yes. you know, um, about the information that you, you've read and they would, you know, know about these things and mm. be able to start a dialogue. Let's get off the computers yeah. and the phones and start dialoguing yeah. again. It's Isn't that a challenge now with children, even mm -hmm. from the age of five or so, um, so much on the, the computer, mm -hmm. so much on the um, media, mm -hmm. Roblox and all these Xbox. Yes. Maybe you should create an Xbox Black History thing. Maybe, you know, yeah, maybe, definitely. Can we make a note of that? I yes. think actually figure that out. Um, Paula, 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 you want Paula, your royalties, Paula, yeah? Paula Perry and I, no, we, we call through that. We yeah, call okay, through let's that. do it. No, come on, think about it. Oh my days, it's all out there. Everybody knows about this yeah. now, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, but why not? Why not? I actually bought um, recently, I don't know if you've come across them, there's these set of cards that, um, I've actually one, got them in my bag. Um, they're, they're, um, like playing cards. Cap, uh, I can't remember who one, does that. One can clap, is that Lady Loretta? 
No. Oh, okay, no, okay, no, no, yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> it's a box of cards yeah. and they've got 56 cards in there, but it has different influential black people and then it gives you the information about why they're influential. Yes. So you've got um, Malcolm X on there, you've got people like... Um, who else do you have? Paula Perry, is that it? No, no, I'm not. I'm probably be on the next, <laughs> <laughs> the next series of cards. Yeah. But that's a good source. That's yeah. a good a resource to use as well. So people are coming up with different resources. Ingenious and ways. And, and it's so important because I believe that uh, black history is from anything past. Yes. So therefore, in five years' time, it's a part of black history that a book like this was created by um, a team of black academics wanting to ensure that the information is actually filtered down. Definitely. To, yeah. Definitely. And it's also important, and it, it, although it says it's black British history, this is history for all British students, yes. not just black students. Mm. Um, I had an event the other day, and at the end of the event, the lady came up to me, she said, oh, Paula, I didn't know ska music was Jamaican. Yes. Now, that shocked me. I was like, wow, ska music is Jamaican. Yeah. However, but if you've been listening to ska music and not realise where it came from, it will get you see how easily that can get lost. Yes. Because that, you know, ska music is a Jamaican style of music. So, Paula, tell me now, what's the link with um, reggae, ska or whatever and the skinheads? Right, so the skinheads yeah. were influenced by the earlier subculture, the mods and the way they dressed. The mods, yes. Yep. Yeah, and they were influenced by reggae music, they liked reggae music, even the way they skin their hair. But weren't they racist guys? Well, the early, the original yeah. skinheads, they yes. say wasn't racist. They, there was a, um, a separate path yeah, that, that went left off. and right yes, or something like, like yes, that. Right, right, that right. That were, um, you know, the, what they would say were the, the Nazi fascist type right, of skinheads. Right. But the original skinheads enjoyed reggae music. They enjoyed, mm. um, um, Ska, no. Ska yeah. reggae music, even the way they, they shaved their hair okay. was in a representation of copying the Jamaican Rue Boy style. Okay. And um, they used to have the party, you know, like partings come back oh, in yeah. fashion right oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the, the, the original skinheads wore that hairstyle. Um, and there's footage on, on YouTube and so forth where your hair um, skinheads actually say, you know, we were heavily influenced, we wasn't racist, we so, were so, so what do people say when you say that? When, yeah. when you're doing your classes or yeah. whatever, and like even with Black History Month, when yeah. you're going around, where people like uh, amused, I mean, not amused, but yeah. like amazed. Some, some no, some understand the link. Yes. Um, some understand the link. Some people are shocked by it because obviously, if you hear the word skinhead, you automatically think the later skinheads who may have been racist. Yes. Um, but the original skinheads, they were heavily influenced by the Jamaican Rue Boy style, okay. the way they dressed, the way they shaved their hair, the music they listened to. And they would have been. Um, actually having their own functions and parties listening yes. to reggae music. So, 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 so this book here then actually really delve into a lot of things. And an interesting thing about this book, it's from 1940 to 2016, so there's much more work to do before 1948. Most then. definitely. This, this <laughs> focuses on modern history. Modern so history. we've done it specifically on modern black history. Mm, so mm. from the Windrush era up into present day. But yes. obviously, um, black people have been in Britain way before Yes, because I had a previous <laughs> guest, and um, her name is Sheila Farrell, and she, she spoke about La Petite uh, uh, Negress, and, and right, it was okay. a fiction slash non-fiction, but it talks about even slaves traveling to the UK yes. in the 1700s, mm -hmm. and actually developing themselves in, right. in a way. So there's so much things happening, yeah, there's so a much lot history. Of history. So this is really good, Paula, and I do commend you for this and and it's so important that we're doing it even beyond black history. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, because I also say that, you know, this book is not just for Black History Month. It's a book that can be taught with the family yeah. um, you know, across the UK throughout and the year. Also not only for black people but for people it's who want definitely. to understand yes. the history. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a quick break here. As you can see, we're just getting deeper into things. Yeah. Today I've got a very interesting guest. She's an author, and um, there's much more about her. And of course, we're going to talk about La Petite Negresse. Am I correct, Shane? That's beautifully said. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> we, we have to educate our, our young children to be able to say no yeah. and to agree that that is an acceptable thing to do. But I always think of it this way. I always ask the question, do you think you are more likely 
to get a career progression mm -hmm. if you actually um, succumb to harassment yeah. or if you fight it. When you go back in time and you understand the moors of, uh, of North Africa yes. actually occupied Spain from, you know, 711 AD mm -hmm. right up until 14. 192 when they were finally sort of expelled. Mm -hmm. That's over 700 years. Yes. I well, thank my guest Sheila Farrell for being on the show. Awesome. So th then I go to this question and what in your opinion then is the importance of the positive representation in academia because mm -hmm. we talked about it yeah. earlier. It is a lack of such that even propelled. Yeah. You know and presentation in academia and mainstream in breaking the negative stereotypical mm -hmm. views of ethnic minorities in this country? To me personally, it's important of how you think about yourself yes. is a representation of how you think about your people and yes. those around you. So it's important to have high esteem, knowing you know, achievements, knowing what black people have done mm. before you, yeah. provides you with that level of um, high esteem. Yes. It provides you with confidence. It provides you with, you know, ability to know what people have done before you and yes. gives you a sense of confidence of, or not confidence, it gives you a sense of aspiration and of what you can and actually achieve and yourself. And a bit to talk about my, knowing yourself and your mindset, which is key. You keep mentioning your mindset as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so it, it, history is very important. Um, mm. as, as Marcus Garvey said, a people who without history is like a tree with no mm. roots. So you need to know your history in order to give you that element of confidence in your, in your race, confidence in um, your, your people yeah. around you. Yeah. And, and, and how, is the, how is the book um, selling? Yeah. You... The book's going very well. Yeah. It's a number one bestseller. Yes. Um, it's had a vast amount of interest. Teachers have bought it and a lot of parents have it. And what I've been told is while parents are working through the book with their children, yes. they're unaware of many of many the of information. The, so the parents there. are learning as well. Exactly. So where, where can they get the book? Where, so where the can books, people get the book? Yeah. Yep, so the book's available on Amazon. Amazon, yes. And you can also get the book directly from myself or any of the other authors. Fantastic. So, yes. so, and ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that I have done and I've recently, because I'm always an anti-black history person, I like black history, yeah. but I mean anti-black history month person, because I believe that one should not actually just focus so much on black history in one month. I classify uh, black history like you're swatting your exams and you're waiting for this date. And then because you're waiting for this date, you've done everything leading up to this date. Then before that, there's not that emphasis. Yeah. So what I'm saying, why not do it once a week, every year? Mm -hmm. Somebody said to me, once a week, for how many years, Silver? I said, every year. Mm -hmm. And then earlier, some other guys who I have on my set, they said, every day, black <laughs> history. Yeah. You know? Because if it is treated as, a, what should I say, a regular and normal staple mm -hmm. of a diet, yes. then what will happen? You grow well, isn't it? Grow, you definitely. I'll give you an example. When yeah. I started to learn about... Um, Black history yes. and the African empires and so forth, which I didn't know. It does give you that element of you start standing wow. up straight. You feel like, yeah. wow, I'm we from were King and the from inventors from, uh, yeah, or yeah. so forth. I had a question, sorry to. Yeah, go please, up, please, please. But I had a question when I delivered a lecture a few weeks ago, and the gentleman said to me, What is one of the things that you've enjoyed learning, mm. you know, throughout your um, research? Yeah. And one of the things were learning about Timbuktu. Now, when I was growing yeah. up, T Timbuktu, for me, was a place that meant far, far away. I didn't know it was a place that actually I'm, I'm existed. I'm glad you said it. I'll give my story about that. You keep yeah. talking. Yeah. And Timbuktu is a place of, um, a learned place. They had universities there. Many people studied. The most um, expensive commodity in Timbuktu was books. Mm -hmm. And those days, you couldn't photocopy a book. You would have to, they would have a scribe that would write yeah. out a book. Yeah. Um, and that was vital to me yes. because I was thinking, wow, it was a learning place. And many European people went to Timbuktu to yes. study. Um, but they didn't tell us. But, <laughs> but if you don't know, you don't know. The, the, the yeah. funny thing you mentioned about um, Timbuktu, you're, you're born here. Yes, I am. Okay, I'm born in Jamaica. Yeah. And so I get it raw. It is a, oh, where you come from? And Timbuktu, that is yeah. when, but it was deemed to be derogatory. Yeah. But when you think about it, where you come from, way back at Timbuktu, mm. 
way back. Yeah. I mean to say the foundation. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's a message within it. Where you come from? Timbuktu, where you come from? Tim far back. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the narrative then also need to change. Maybe we need to do a book called Timbuktu, the yeah. history, the relevance, yeah. the foundation, the structure. Well, there's, so there's many books out there. Yes. Out there that, that's the thing that, again. That, that, that is out there that you can learn about Timbuktu. Well, well my challenge, my place. challenge to viewers as well, this is one of the books which I'm pushing as and endorse as one of the books to be used for, for black history, um, the teaching of black history once a week, every year with your children. I put up a video, uh, a brief one with my children, just talking to them about it. But we didn't even start to talk about even slavery. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about Africa. Mm -hmm. We haven't reached a part about slavery yet because right. somebody said slavery is an interruption mm -hmm. process, ladies and gentlemen. And, and I would challenge also, ladies and gentlemen, if you watch this show, email in or sending messages of uh, books that you believe are crucial that we can add to the library of books that we will actually um, suggest or recommend for persons to actually learn and to teach others about black history. Yeah. So therefore, it is continuous, continuous, yeah. and continuous. Am I correct? Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to recommend one now. Please, if that's yes. Okay. Um, it's by my co-author called Robin Walker. Oh, yes. He's the black history man, and it's mm -hmm. called When We Wrought. When we? When we ruled. When we root. Ruled. Ruled, okay, yeah, when, when we, we ruled. ruled. Okay, yeah. Robin Walker. Robin, I, Robin okay. Walker. So there's another book by Robin Walker, mm -hmm. When We Ruled. That's another book you need to check out. Yes. And I think what we're going to, yeah, and I, I, we, we're developing this whole thing. Yeah. The, the, I call it once per week, not once a month a year. Mm -hmm. That's the hashtag, once per week, not once a month per year. But of course, when the black history come, what we do, we still use it. Yes. We celebrate. Yes. Because it is like, it's going to be like a gradation, ladies and gentlemen. I got it. Mm -hmm. So the Black History Month will be like a gradation because you've been working right through the time. <laughs> That's a good and, yeah. and then also, and this is a challenge for the ladies and gentlemen, if you and your children actually have done any of these little um, five minute, three minute, two minute clips, send them in. And we'll actually broadcast it to say what you have learned by sitting with your children and learning a bit about black history with some of the lessons there. And because it will inspire others as well. Let us show what we're doing. Yes. It's a good idea. A good idea. Very. And, 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 and will you be a part of the whole process? Most definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paula, listen, before we go, uh -huh. I want to ask you this question. Um, what is your... Um, uh, what should I say, a quote, or mm -hmm. um, what should I say, um, a mantra that you live by, that okay. I always try to find something that I can inspire yes. persons, um, that you can um, share with our viewers. Yeah. One I absolutely like is when you know better, you do better. Okay. And I think that's a, a, a very key thing. When you know better, you do better. Yes, and yes. it's all about, we're continuously learning throughout life, so mm. you'll n you never know it all. Yes. And being able to continuously be in education, yes. self-development yes. um, is a beautiful thing. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard that. Once you know better, you do better. Now, I had my guests, as you can see, Paula was been on the show. And it's been a massive learning curve for me because I found out a bit about the, the SCA um, and the link and with skinheads, and that doesn't make sense really. That blows many people's socks off. But at the same time, it's a learning curve, and I believe that with books like Black British History, these are tools, tools that we can use to educate ourselves. And as I said, Bob, uh, uh, what um, Marcus Garvey said, uh, if with, you know, without um, uh, foundation or without mm -hmm. your, your roots, then you, you go astray, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know that saying by uh, Marcus Garvey a lot. And I believe with the work of Paula, what she's doing, and others at the same time, not to miss out the others mm -hmm. like her co-partner, Robin Walker, Vanika Marshall, and, and Anthony Vaughan, they must be commended. And I believe as much as possible as we do this, then others will take on. And also, ladies and gentlemen, whosoever is watching, this is not just for the black community, but history mm -hmm. is for everyone. But what we're doing this time is, we're telling it from our story, mm -hmm. our perspective. Because before, it was given to us from other perspective. And you can't even blame them because they didn't know that other perspective. They knew it from their perspective. So we know now we're giving it from our perspective to share it to the world. So listen, Paula, listen, I want to thank you so much for coming thank on the show. Thank you very much for having me. That was awesome. Thank you. And um, this is the start of a massive relationship. To know more about Paula Perry, 
what you can do is go to our website, silverntv.com or silburn.com, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, and see you next time on The Silburn Show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you, I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much, see you next time. Greetings, my name's Paula Perry from You For Us and I'm here on the Silburn TV show. I'm doing a challenge to win a signed copy of the book Black British History. And the question is, who pioneered the keyhole surgery and what country were they from? Now you will find out how to enter this competition below and I wish you all the best. Okay, I'm always ready James. <laughs> Sit back here. Yeah? I've changed my tire actually.